everybody. We're talking today about chemical reactions. So in your life, you go about eating food and doing exercise and, uh, and living. And really what it comes down to, everything happening in your body uh, is a series uh, of extensive chemical reactions. So it's good to have at least a working understanding of what a chemical reaction is and what you can expect from it. So as you can see here, uh, a chemical reaction is a process, might want to have not black on black there, uh, a process by which two or more compounds or elements interact to form one or more new compounds. And this is essential. You have to have something new produced. Um, sometimes things can look like chemical reactions and not be chemical reactions. For example, if you put a uh, pot of water, I guess that's actually, for, for me, it'll be a beaker of water. Over fire, you, you'll see bubbles form, and you'll see steam come off of it. And it looks like there's a chemical reaction. Bubbles, heat transfer, energy release uh, are often associated with a chemical reaction. But in this case, you have to remember that you started with water, and up here, the steam is just water. So you don't really have any new substance there. So what is a reaction that would actually produce a new substance? Uh, here's a reaction I've talked about in class before. Um, the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. So you have hydrogen. Now hydrogen actually, not that you really need to know this, but when it's just hanging out on its own, it's in gas form and it is H2. So that's this right here. These represent our hydrogen atoms right there. And I've put a couple of them here just so I can play with it. Um, and oxygen actually does the same thing. Uh, it just doesn't, you can think of it as it doesn't like to be alone. So it, it hangs out as O2. Now when I say it doesn't like to be alone, you can reflect back on some of the basic chemistry. And remember it had to do with uh, stability and that outer energy level of electrons. So, okay, so we see that we're going to get water here. I've talked about this before, and this is, a, this is a chemical reaction, and this is the basic setup of a chemical reaction, where on one side, you list what is going in. You have your, I guess you could call it ingredients, what you're starting with, So the technical name for that is that they are reactants, okay? The reactants are what you start with. Okay? Now they're going to combine, rearrange, and form, in this case just one, but it can be multiple products. Products. So you have reactants, and the reactants go through the chemical reaction to form products. So let's take a look here at what actually happens between our hydrogen and oxygen. Let me just get rid of some of this extra material so it doesn't get too crazy looking. Okay. So what we have here is we have hydrogen that has covalent bonds. So they are bonded together right there. The oxygen has covalent bonds too. So if we want to rearrange these and have them attached together, the first thing that has to happen is those bonds need to be broken. And like anything else that you can think of that needs to be broken, some energy actually has to go into breaking that. Um, so what I'm going to do here is see if I can just move them. I grab that. Okay. So that's one of the bonds. And I don't know if I can move it. Oh, boy. Oh, that's right. I attached them. Not so. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I'm going to actually just draw them over here so that we don't get hung up. My technology is messing with me. So I need to break these bonds. We're going to break all of the bonds here. Okay, and like I say, that requires some energy to do. Now, once that happens, though, and I'll just use colors to represent what we have, our hydrogen which are like this, can start to pair up with other things. And they're going to pair up with 
are oxygen molecules. So I can do them like this. All right, so the breaking of the bonds frees the atoms up from each other. In this case, the uh, hydrogen and the oxygen atoms separate from each other. And now they can start to form new bonds. And what happens, as we've seen a little bit, the hydrogens bond to the oxygen instead. Right. Now, some important things to notice are what happened here. I, I actually put a, an extra oxygen in here. You actually don't need this one. So what happened here is these hydrogens separated and these hydrogens separated, and then you had a reorganization. They decided to bond with that oxygen. These went to those. All the things that were present at the beginning are still there. Again, you can ignore this one. It would have just been extra and left over. Sorry about putting that in there. Um, but you still have four hydrogen atoms, two oxygens, and then over here, four hydrogen atoms, and of course, your two oxygens. Everything's there. We just rearranged it. Now, here are a couple more examples of chemical reactions. Uh, oxygen reacting, I, I, I'm not even going to do the chemical formulas. Let's keep this simple. Oxygen reacting with iron. So you can think of a nail or uh, some other piece of iron, an, an iron fence or something like that. And they react to form a compound, a brand new compound called iron oxide. You probably know that a little bit better as rust. So this represents the rusting of iron in the presence of oxygen. The second reaction, where we take uh, CO2, I will write the formulas for this one, CO2 and we react it with water um, to produce the product. So those are our reactants, CO2 and H2O, and our products are C6H12O6 and a little bit of O2. We may have covered this in class, but this actually is the process of photosynthesis, which we will cover in some good detail to try to find out what's going on in all those plants around us. And notice what's happening here, that you have carbon reacting with water, actually carbon dioxide reacting with water to form this high energy molecule, which brings up a point that what do you need for photosynthesis like this to happen? I'll give you a hint. Okay, you need sunshine, and specifically the energy it produces. So this is a reaction that actually takes in energy, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Okay, there's some aspects of this that I'm I'm going to skip over, like the fact that you would actually need six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, and you would get six oxygen molecules. That's called balancing an equation, and your chemistry teacher is going to be uh, wonderful at teaching you that next year. Okay, our last reaction here is the one we saw on the uh, previous screen. So H2O plus O2 as your reactants, and here is water as your product. Again, if I wanted to be technical, I'd need to balance this. And the reason I bring this one back is that what happens here is that hydrogen and oxygen are relatively high energy, high energy molecules, and water is actually a very low energy molecule. Okay, so if that's the case, where did this energy go? You may have heard of uh, the law of conservation of energy, that energy cannot be created or destroyed. There's one for mass as well. Uh, so that energy has to go somewhere, and in fact it does. Uh, this is a very explosive reaction where you get light and heat, you know, essentially a little fireball that comes off as this reacts. Now you could do the opposite and actually turn water into hydrogen and oxygen, and we'll talk about that just a little bit in just a little bit here. Okay. So let's talk energy. So the energy in chemical reactions, is, this is exactly what we were just talking about. In some cases, the reactants are low energy. So let's say reactants are low energy. We'll just say E. 
and the products are high energy. And so the question actually I have to ask is, where is that energy? If a reaction happens and the molecules are actually, actually absorbing energy, the energy is found within the bonds. So they have a high bond energy. So that's where you find them. And there's energy in these bonds as well, but there's just not as much. So this is this example right here. You have reactants right there. It says reactants. And this just measures your energy right there and then the, the reaction taking place, course of reaction. And what happens is, as you can see, the amount of energy within the actual chemical compounds is increased. Now up to that point, there's this term. I'm going to write it again so you can see it. It's called activation energy. The activation energy is the energy needed to get a chemical reaction underway, needed to start. If you go back to the earlier in the lecture here, I needed to break bonds between hydrogen and oxygen. The activation energy accomplishes that. Okay. Now, once that happens, once there's enough activation energy, the reaction will occur fully. And in this case, the products end up here with this much energy. So you can see there was actually an increase in the bond energy. Some reactions are like that. They store up energy for us. Uh, one term for that is that that is an endothermic reaction. An endothermic reaction, and the key here is that it essentially absorbs energy from the environment, from some energy source, could be the sun, could be um, in the electrolysis of water, you put actually water, you put electrodes in the water and that's your source of energy. So keep that in mind that some reactions absorb energy. You see them uh, in those ice packs that are often associated with sports, that somebody gets hurt and you have to pop, you slap the ice pack and it breaks and it eventually you have this uh, cold, it's cold ice pack, because it's actually absorbing the energy from around it. And, you know, maybe that's somebody's head. Well, I guess they would be frowning. Um, now they have a weird fish mouth. But anyway, um, another type of reaction is down here below, where you have the reactants, reactants, and they are going to form products again. has to always happen that way. But in this case, the reactants are high energy within their bonds. And the products are low energy. Okay. And here's the case of that, where you start here with your reactants. Now notice, in both of these, there's a certain amount of energy needed to get this started. Once again, that is the activation energy. It is it has to be there. You have to have energy to break the bonds. Different reactions require different amounts of activation energy. Right. In this case now, once we hit the activation energy, a lot of energy would be released until you get to the energy of the products down here. And this diff difference right here, that's the energy that would be released by the reaction, maybe as light or heat, or you could capture it uh, in a different way. Now, this, the term for this is that this is an exothermic reaction. I always think of it as the energy that thermic, sounds like thermometer, heat, okay, is exiting. So that's at least one way to remember it. An exothermic reaction releases energy. And that this is the stuff you do every day. Okay? You eat food and you take it through a very controlled, slow exothermic reaction. The energy is released and actually gets captured by other molecules that absorb it in an endothermic reaction. So you actually have this balance going on within you, within what's called your metabolism, 
as you break things down to release their energy, and then you use that energy to fuel other actions, whether it's muscle movement or movement of substances or whatever it happens to be. Okay, so that gives you some basic information about chemical reactions that are going on in your body. Please review your notes here, and if you haven't taken notes, maybe start over and take some. Write down questions, and we can expand on our understanding of this as we go. All right, well, I will see you in class. Please, like I say, ask questions if you have them. Great. See you later.